Well, when I first got married, this was just out in print, and I got it. So you can tell I've well used it. I've uh, had it for nearly all my meals the first years I cooked. I cooked out of this cookbook. You were always excited when you got married at your shower and you opened a gift and it was one of the cookbooks. I can't remember not having the Hardy cookbooks around. Um, you know, my early, my, my mom is a really good cook and, uh, you know, these books were out. Well, sitting around the table is when you can really get to know a person. Eating together always bond, binds us together. My family growing up, Connie and our brother and our parents, we always had an evening meal together, and we both have done that for our our own families. Sitting around a table, sharing a meal, as you know, is a big part of growing up in, in a great community like Harding. Our preacher, Jim Woodruff, mentioned one time the importance of eating together and sharing meals, and he said that he believed the most significant times in earth would always be remembered as those that we were either giving or receiving hospitality. It's a gift, I think, to learn hospitality and to be good at it, you know. So you put the person's needs uh, maybe ahead of your own and you serve them in that way. So I think it is a good way to build community. Um, I think it's kind of bi biblical too, you know, people gather around food, always. Food is a common denominator in all cultures. I, I think it's important to look that even in Jesus' ministry, there are numerous times where he went into someone's home and had a meal. Jesus, I think, used it as a ministry. He um, fed the 5,000. Before he could teach them, he broke bread and he had the Last Supper. He asked the disciples, have you eaten breakfast when they brought in the 150-something fish? And he sat down and over charcoal, he baked the fish, baked the bread, and they ate together. I know sometimes we'll say, well, I mean, I'm going to eat, you're going to eat, you know, you might as well eat together, you know, and so I think that's part of it, just that we all eat a meal, and why not share it and make it more fun, connect, you know, connecting with somebody else. I think about Charlene Brock. She has a lot of recipes. What I remember is she was also very hospitable, and so for every homecoming that she was able to, up until just recently, she would make a big pot of this cabbage stew that's in here, and lemonade tea, and just invite everybody that came from homecoming that had been a bison, football player, or cheerleader into her house. And she blessed so many people. Eloise Muncy was our girls' Bible teacher, and at the end of the year when we were getting ready to promote, she invited us all into her home and set us down at, around her table with her nice dishes and the food she had prepared, and we felt so special and so honored. There's so many people, I, I, would, I mean, their names are in all the cookbooks, but the, you, know, you have to have a, somebody that is willing to do the hard work. And there's just something special about you know, making a recipe of someone that either you knew or that's related to you. Those cookbooks just carry you through not only Harding, but all through the world with people that you've met and have lived and died and still share their legacy of their life and their foods. Every time you look in the book, it has somebody's name in there that you love and that loves you and so you know that you know there's you're connecting again with that special person.